Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Spiral Matrix. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. Given an M by N matrix, return all elements of the matrix in spiral order. Example one, we see our spiral right here. We go one, two, three, six, nine, eight, seven, four, and we end at five. So this is our output right here. And example two, we have the same spiral order. We're going clockwise from the outermost layer, working our way in. So we're going one, two, three, four to first go right. Then to go down, we go 8, 12, and then left is 11, 10, 9, back up is 5, and then right is 6, 7. And that's exactly what we output. Okay, so this question itself is pretty straightforward. We just want to return all the elements in our matrix in spiral order. And like always, we're going to start off with an example. So let's do example 2 right over here. Okay, so I have example two over here. This is a three by four matrix. We're ranging from one to 12 inclusive. And we wanna traverse this in a spiral order and return that final output. So again, what did we want to do, right? We wanna start off from the outermost layer, traveling right down, left, up. Without touching cells we've already seen before, and we keep going until we converge in the middle. So in this case, we would go one, two, three, four. And once this is done, we wanna go down. But we can't start at four because we already saw that. So we're going to start off at eight, going to 12. And after this is done to go left, we can't start at 12. So we go 11, 10, 9. And at this point to go up, we can't start at nine. So we start at five, but we can't end at one since that's already been seen. So we only go up to five. And then to go right, we're also again bound. So we can't start at five and we can't end at eight. So we go right at six and then we end right at seven. At that point, we've covered our entire matrix. So we just output. So if you notice something, we're just going to be going right down, left, up, and our bounds are just going to be getting tighter and tighter. So all we really need to do is keep track of our minimum and maximum bounds for both rows and columns. So for our column bounds right over here, these columns that we want to traverse through, what is that going to be? In the beginning, our minimum column, so this is going to be minimum column over here, it's going to be zero and I'm just going to write this down as well. So minimum column is going to start off at zero. And what's our maximum column? So maximum column would actually be over here, max column here, because in a for loop, we start off with our first index, which is inclusive and the last one, which is not. So here it would have to be four. That way we can iterate from zero, one, two to three because four would not be included. So max column is going to be the length of matrix of zero, which equals four. And the same thing for minimum row and maximum row, right? So our minimum row is going to be this one over here. So it's min row, which is zero. And our maximum row is just going to be the length of matrix, which is three. So our maximum row is going to be down here. So this means again, we're going to go from zero, one, two, four rows. Now we actually want to do the traverse and what is the order that we want to follow? So that's going to be right first. So to go right, where are we looping through? We're looping through all of the columns, right? So four column in range, and we're just going to range from our minimum to maximum column. So it's going to be min call to max call. We start with an inclusive index and then an exclusive one over here. So all we have to do is append to say some output. So I'm going to define output over here as well. So output dot append matrix of row and column. Now we're moving our column down, but our row has to be initialized to zero. And once that's done, right, we've just went through this entire first row. That means every single element in that row is seen. So our bound for that first row can move up. So now our minimum row is no longer zero, but one. So min row is now one. And we're going to move this down over here, which means now our matrix is just this part. And we just went right. So now we want to go left. We're going to do the same thing with row. So for row in range, min row to max row, we're doing the same thing with output dot append of matrix row and column. So here we're going down from our rows and our column variable actually ended up at this location. So we don't actually need to modify it. It's going to remember that variable. So all we need to do is change our row. And once that's done, we basically have covered this entire last column. So we can move maximum column down by one. So it's going to be max column minus equals one. So our max column now moves over here. So now the entire matrix that we're dealing with is just this. 
So now max column is no longer four, but it is three. So we just went right, we went down. This should have been down over here. And now we wanna go left. So we wanna go left. So we're gonna do the same thing we did for our right, but we're just gonna reverse it. So we're gonna go for column in range. We're gonna start off at our max column minus one because this is this time is now going to be inclusive. And we're gonna go up until min column. Again, we have to do minus one because this will now not be inclusive. And we wanna add another minus one because now we're counting down. So we're counting down from our max to our min. And we wanna do the same thing where we append to output our matrix of row and column. And again, when we ended with our downward part of the spiral, we ended with our row pointing right over here. We ranged all the way down. So row doesn't need to change, but column is just going to be moving back over here. And once that happens, once column moves all the way down, We've basically just covered this very last row. So we're gonna do max row minus equals one. We're bringing up that bound. So now max row is going to be here, which means this is the only part of the matrix that is left. So we just went right, down, left. Now we need to go up. So this is going to be the last for loop. And for this, we're doing the same thing with column, but for row. So for row in range, max row minus one, min row minus one, minus one, and we append it to output matrix row of column. And since we just covered that first column, we're now bringing in the bound of the minimum column. So min column plus equals one. So min column is now over here and max column was here. So let's go and update those numbers. And we should have done this for the max row as well. So max row had become two. And now min column bumps up to be one. So these are our bounds. We're basically just dealing with this part over here. So we want to keep following these loops up until our minimum meets our maximum. So we're basically going to be putting this in a while loop. So while our min column is less than our max column and our minimum row is less than our maximum row, we just keep going through this. So now, you know, we still haven't met our minimum and maximums. So we just went up as we ended over here to five. And now we are back in this while loop to go right. So for column and range, minimum column to maximum column. So ranging from one to three, and it's not inclusive, so we're gonna go from index one to two, and we're just gonna append that to our output array. And after that's done, we're bumping up minimum row by one. So this is now two. And at this point, we would have covered every single element in our matrix. But if you notice one thing over here, after this is done, after we end this right loop, we go into our down, right? And down would range from minimum row to maximum row, which are both two. So we don't actually go in this for loop. There's nothing to iterate over. But as we go back into left, there are still columns to go through. Because if you notice, we either converge first on our row or our column. Here, minimum row had moved up, so this should have actually been over here. Minimum row had moved up, so they've converged. There's nothing to iterate through, but column still hadn't. So because we converged rows first, column didn't move. We need an additional check for both our left and up, because once we modified these, we want to make sure we're still within the condition for the remaining operations over here. So I'm going to move this over here and put this in an if condition. It's going to be the same one for our while loop. So if our minimum column is less than our maximum column and our minimum row is less than our maximum row, then only do we check again for our left and up. Otherwise that is it. And all we have to do is return our final output array. So let's go ahead and just clean up this code a little bit. Let's move all of this down. And all we have to do at the end is return output, output. And minimum column is going to start off with zero as is minimum row and our max column and max row are going to be length of matrix of zero and length of matrix respectively. And that is all we need to do. So let's go ahead and submit this. Wrong answer. What's wrong with this? Oh, return should have actually been over here. It should have been outside of the while loop. So that was an indentation error. Let's submit this again. And now it's accepted. So talking about space and time complexity, for time, we go through our entire matrix, every single element, so that is going to be O of N. And for space, we're only keeping track of a few variables, so that is constant O of one, because it has nothing to do with how big our input would be. 
And before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example just to make sure we fully understand what's happening. So we're gonna go through our code line by line and run through a quick example. Okay, for example, let's use example one right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just going through our code line by line, we have minimum column and minimum row being zero. So I'm just going to separate this out so we can update these later. And maximum column and maximum row. So both are going to be three in this case. I'm just gonna write this like this just so it's easy to read through. Row is gonna be initialized to zero and output is empty. So while our minimum column is less than our maximum column, which is true, and same for our row, we first go right. So for column in range of zero to three, we're gonna append to output matrix of row, which is zero and column, which is basically ranging. So column right now is going to start off at zero. So appending that to our array, we have zero, zero. So it's gonna be one. And we go back in this for loop. So column is now going to be one. So we have zero, one as our index, which is going to be two. And then we're back in this for loop. Column is now going to be two. So we have zero, two, which is element three. So we append this again to our output. And now we move minimum row up by one. So minimum row is now one. Now we go down, we loop through our minimum row and our maximum row. So we're looping through between one and three and our column ended at two over here. So we start off at one, two, which is going to be six. We start off at one and then we go to two, two, which is going to be nine. So we append this over here and we're out of this for loop because we just iterated through one and three. And now we move maximum column down by one. So max column now becomes two. And now we make the same check again. So these both still hold true. And now we wanna traverse left. So for column in range, max column minus one. So that's going to be one. So we're ranging from one. And then min column minus one, which is negative one. And we're gonna be going counting down. So we're subtracting one each time. So our column starts off at one and our row earlier had ended at index two. So right now we are at two, one. So that's element eight over here. So let's append that to our output. And now we're incrementing by minus one. So we go to zero. So we have two zero and which is seven. We're gonna append this to our output. And we stop at zero because it's not inclusive, right? We can't go to negative one, we stop at zero. And we finished going left. So now we bring maximum row down by one. So max row is now two. And now we are in this for loop over here. Basically, we've just covered this entire outward backward C. And now we want to go up. We're arranging for row. So maximum row, which is going to be two. So it's going to be two minus one. So we're going from one going up until minimum row minus one. So that's going to be zero. And we're going minus one. So we start off at one. And that's also where we're going to end because this is not inclusive. So row is one. And we know from our column where we left off, that was zero. So what is at one zero? Well, that's just four. So we appended that and we exit this for loop. So now we have one added to our minimum column. So now this is one. And we go back into this while loop. This is still true. So we go into this, right? So for column in range, a minimum column to maximum column, so it's going to range from one to two. So we're just basically covering only index column one. So what's at column one? It's over here. And row ended also at index one. So what is at one one? That is just five. Append this to our output. And now we bump min row up by one. So minimum row is now two. So now if we want to go down, we range from minimum row to maximum row. But here both are two, so there's nothing to range through. And then we go into this if statement, which again doesn't hold true because our rows have converged. So we know we've covered every single element and this order is correct. It's one, two, three, six, nine, eight, seven, four, and then five. So if you have any questions with this at all, let me know down below. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.